Welcome to another episode of Down a Rabbit Hole with Four Fifth. I'm your host, Hocus Four Fifth, and I got my co host in the building, Balance. Balance, what's going on? Hey, I'm doing good today. How are you? I mean, I'm good. It's been a it's been a long day. Um, you know, but we here though, as usual. And uh, I think yeah. today's show is gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. Um, you know, it's been a lot of talks lately about Larry Hoover and who he is and what he means to to us, to our people. And it caught my attention. And I'm like, okay, so you know, we gotta we gotta definitely um touch this topic. So um, so you know, today y'all we got a special guest to actually touch on this topic. And you know, without further ado, I'm gonna just bring the guest in and let him explain himself and tell him who y'all is. Rod Hayes is in the building. Rod Hayes, what's going on, big bro? What's going on? What's going on? I was listening to the introduction and I noticed that y'all names are significant. Yes. Mm. Right. So so she's balanced. Yes. That's my exactly. 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 And you said what you said hocus what? Hocus four fifth. Hocus four fifth. Hocus is Hayoka, which is the sacred mystics of the land. So you picked the name without even knowing you was calling yourself a Hayoka. The 45 is the shotters, the ones who shoot on behalf of the elders. So you've been spitting the game out in the public. Wow. So you've been, been shooting from behind the scenes. Yo, when, I, when people always ask me, yo, where do you get the name Hocus 4 5th from? And it's crazy. Like, I'm, I'm going to start jacking that. <laughs> start, what does it mean? <laughs> I love that. But, you know, you said I picked it. I didn't even pick this name. The name chose me. So real quick, I'm going to yes. tell you where I got the name from. So th it was a guy named Hocus in my neighborhood who he was a graffiti artist. Back in the days, you know, it was, graffiti was big in New York and in the Bronx. And for some reason... Two of my friends, they thought they seen me tagging it up. We, we call when you say tagging up, that means writing it on the wall. I know what it means. I'm with right. you. <laughs> <laughs> so for the audience out there. He said he's not old. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> no, but you know, being older, he definitely would know what I'm talking about. So, you know, they thought they seen me tagging it up on the wall. And, and I was like, yo, that wasn't me. They like, Hocus, I see you. I knew that was you. So every day they call me Hocus. And I was, this when I was like 11, 12, 13, around there. And I was just like, yo, I, I, I'm Hocus. You know, and fourth. Okay, so. The way that they named you was called uh, a mirror reflection knock. Oh. So you reminded them of him. So he gave, they gave you the same name he had. That's called a namesake lock. So he was a Hayoka and he danced in front of you to show you how to do the sacred dance of the masters. In other words, he made the people in your community see him in a specific way that you didn't want to be seen, so you became the exact opposite. Wow. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, that's called polarizing the effect. Polarizing the effect. Wow. So I, I, could, I could tell, right, and I know uh, y'all could tell by now out there that we are talking to a real elder right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this this um interview is not about me. It's about Rob Hayes and, and, and Larry Hoover and, you know, info that he he's, he's here to bring towards you know, fourth. Um, we want to start off though with Raw Hayes. Who are you? Let us know who you are and what significant role you play right now on the planet Earth. Um, right now, I just so happen to figure out how to get us out of the blood rituals they was using to oppress us. Right, and I done it on behalf of the leader that asked me to do it, Larry Hoover. So he told me I had to study a lot. Um, on the journey, so he said we was brain banging. He said, "He said let them out there gang bang all they want. We need somebody. One of us got to buckle down and brain bang. We got to hit the book so hard that when we come out, we will be a totally different person because they said that we would never be able to rise from the dirt back to the position of prominence. And if we can get one of us to make it, we can. We all made it." So they all put their money on me across all of the families. I was the last resort, but everywhere they put me to test me, I bumped straight. And that means that I stood up for my principles and my values, no matter who came from what direction. I just told the truth and kept it real and kept it moving. 
So I got the respect of the ancestors and the elders on the land from my whole journey throughout my life. I was going around meeting and greeting the elders from an early age to be given the, uh, the information I needed to figure it out. So they was doing what we call voodoo conjure. The voodoo conjure started when Garvey came over. The reason why Garvey came over because Prince Hall and Absalom Jones who started the Prince Hall Masonic Lodge discovered that they was using our own shit to oppress us. But they didn't have what you call the Grand Master's key, the gorilla key. So that's why Garvey was able to tell you all of the secrets in one lecture, or one speech. It's called the whirlwind speech. And this is what we watching the effect of because he gave us back the secret to our shit. Pardon my French. But he gave us back our, the secret, right? So once we understand that the whole secret is to not be deceived, and to follow your own mind and to use your intelligence. That was the platform of Garvey. When you look back, every time we start coming from under the oppression, the motherfucker look like us, break the, um, the momentum by killing our leader. Mm. And they've been telling us misdirection, pointing that finger at somebody they call the white man. But by um, cat's paw, using somebody to do your dirt, they made it look like it was somebody that didn't look like us doing the dirt. But everywhere we went, them people weren't there, and we still end up with one of us killing our great leader. So the enemy is within. Mm. So once we get rid of the enemy within, then we no longer have to worry about the external enemy because we can see him for what he is. You can see him now. All you got to do is go on any other videos I did and scroll down and you'll see people calling out who they call in agents, mm -hmm. race traders. They expose themselves by defying the call to unity of the tribes because they understand that that means that they can't do the dirt they was doing before because when we are in charge of our own homes you can't run over our children because the parents is home now you know and so now we come back the elders come back the ancestors come back because somebody infiltrated the family tree that didn't belong there and that's why they say everywhere you look they there but you don't know they there. They look just like us, some of them darker, with woolier hair. And they came over as conquistadors, which is a, a from the Tudors, is a royal family of Europe. They came from the Canary Islands and went into Europe as Etruscans. And they was over there do, doing the baby raping rituals drinking their blood, making adrenochrome and all of those things. Then they came over here. They challenged us, our elders. We didn't have no high chiefs on the land. We had only um, one, two and three feather chiefs. We didn't have four regalia chiefs on the land at the time they came. So can, can and that's I, how they was able to get in. The only reason why I want to chime in because I, I know where you're going. So like, just for the people who don't understand you said from when they came here, we didn't have no chiefs on the land. So when you when you say we, you speaking of the indigenous people of this land and, and as for the lack of a better term, black people or so-called African-Americans, we was already here, right? This is what you're trying to that's, talk about. Uh, that's absolutely a thousand percent yeah. what I'm saying. Okay, so anybody that, that got a third grade education to do the math on the slave ship knows some BS. <laughs> right. Because there's no way you can stay with no bathroom, no running water, no toilets, chained together, packed like sardines. It's a gas chamber in a week. And this is a six-month journey by sea on a boat. Right. 
And then the record, the written record, our ancestors clearly have in the written record, when they came, we saw no ships. They was there at the time telling us in the future, when they came, we saw no shit. I mean, don't fall for the bullshit they about to tell you. Mm. They already preloaded us for it. Now, when certain elders come in, we recognize that that what you call gap in information that makes no sense, a blatant contradiction that tells me there's a problem, an anomaly here that is more important than the story that's being told. There's a hole here I got to patch before I move on. What do they mean they didn't see no ships? The people came some kind of way. They didn't come how they said they came, apparently, because our elders said they didn't come in ships. Where's these pictures of these ships? They got pictures of everything else, right? We don't. Where is the ship? They got ships from, look, they got Chinese ships that go back 10,000 years ago. But they don't got a slave ship from 400 years ago. That don't even make sense. Like, where is the, yeah, you said, forget the pictures. Where's the ship, right? Like, well, why, why are they not? Where the wreckage? You, land somewhere? You, can go, you can go under the water right now and see wreckages that's recorded from the 13, 1200s, the thousand year mark. Even the BC era, you can go see the wreckage. You can't see the wreckage of one freaking slave ship. Mm. They did. They came infiltrated some other means. They brought their slaves with them over the Bering Straits. They couldn't have came in how they see it, but they didn't come south. They went north and trekked around the land and came in from the east and landed in New York. And this is why they keep telling us that we came over on a land bridge between Russia and Alaska. They crept around the top of the map because they was navigators. Even if the story of Columbus is a legitimate story, the black guy that was the navigator, Pedro de Negro, he knew where the hell he was going because he was a navigator of the sea and he had to know the sea. You can't be a navigator and not know the sea because you got to equally as well know the stars. So he had to know exactly where he was going. It was a misdirection. They came in in the islands by that little boat, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. When they came in, that's the red herring. That's the overlay for the underplay. Because the underplay is that the North Pole is the bottom of the planet. When they changed our view and gave us a northerly up perspective, that was our ancestors telling us, look to the North for the solution to the problem. Listen to the story and then look to the north for the solution to the problem. They said in the south they didn't come in on no ship. But a boat that Columbus came in on came from Spain in the, in the Central and South America region. The conquistadors that came in from Spain after the 1611 eviction in mass of the Moors after the Spanish Inquisition when they finally ran their ass out of there, they came and it was looking for gold in Central and South America in search of what they call Cordoba, the lost city of gold. The lost city of gold, in truth, is the crystal city in the book of Revelations. And they couldn't find it because Atlantis didn't sink. They lied to us. It flew. Yeah in the mass extraction to remove people from the planet because catastrophe occurred because Nibiru flipped off course. So they took as many people as they could to preserve life on earth. And we was infiltrated while that was taking place by somebody that wasn't from here, they call him a reptilian. Mm. It looked like walking lizards. 
But when they take on our form, when you kill them on earth, they come back looking like me and you because of their resonance. They ain't us. And you can tell. Are we talking about a, um, are, 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 like as melanated people, can they be reptilians? Some of us. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what that's what so I'm So when they came in, they didn't look like we look now. They came in looking grotesquely disfigured. This is what the Great Wall of China was built for when they first came. That's what the war was about, that they was building a wall to contain them, to contain the threat. When you kill them on earth, they come back through our women looking like humans. But they ain't us. And the only way you can tell they not us is you have to know our hearts. And that's why they've been telling you in your religions about the difference in the wicked and the righteous. They ain't us. We didn't know they killing them on earth, make them come back on earth. And when they come back on earth, they look like us. Or we wouldn't have killed them on earth. This, this is what happened in strategically. Is this got something to do with people be like, you know, when you die, don't go into the light because the light is how they re reincarnating and recycling and putting us in this time loop, so to speak. Is Does that have anything to do with what you're saying? That's how um, no, actually, that's a whole different phenomenon than what I'm talking about. Okay. But they harness that phenomenon by cutting down the tree of life because that's how we used to filter those yeah. souls into the, the deepest parts of the earth. So when they came back in human form, they cut down all of the trees, the giant trees that used to feed their roots to the core of the earth would filter them souls. So they didn't want that. And so they cut all of the trees down. Some of the trees, the leaves used to touch the upper canopy of the atmosphere. You know, so when they was doing that, um, we was fighting wars all over because they were intelligent as we were. So while we fought, we had to study them because they had a, up, a, a they had a, a, a hand up on us. They had something in them that we didn't have in us, that wickedness. To them, it's not wickedness. That's the first thing we got to understand. To them, it's not wicked to them. Because in the universe that they come from, that's their norm. It's not the norm in the universe that we live in. We live in what we call a free will universe and they live in what you call a restricted will universe. And their universe is masculine patriarchal resonance. Ours is feminine matriarchal resonance. Our whole creative structure in this portion of the um, creation is feminine. They came from a different stellar bank that their whole systems was based on the masculine. And this is how our divine feminine and divine masculine of the planet got through out of whack. It's through, the, it's through, them, it's through them breeding here? Is, is, it, is it, that's what it is? Because when they, like, when they breed, are they breeding are they incarnating only their kind or do some of us cycle through that? You know, because you okay, said- Okay, let, let me explain this to you right quick because this, this, this is going to take a lot of people by the loop. Ever since the beginning, the 12 daughters of Eve was all different shades of skin tone. It was 12 of them that cover each sign of the Zodiac from the beginning. We always had people of varying skin tones that settled in different climatic parts of the planet that they chose when the 12 sisters was split and dispatched as Isis queens around the planet or Sybil queens. The Sybil queens is the royal part, the Isis is the high priestess part, and the Isis seat is the queen seat of heaven and earth council seat 40 on the galactic council. The king seat of heaven and earth, what they call the high pharaoh seat or the high seat of illumination, which is represented by our solar sun as a 50 disc. When they call it a 50 disc, that because it flips from a 20, which is a, um, 
10 toes down on the mother line and 10 toes on the father line. And it becomes an elder at the age of 50 of the years of whatever planet it's they're on in this stellar system. So at 50, the one who has passed all of the family rights of each of the families that he was presented to is then presented to be an elder. And now he has to go into uh, a phase of um, development because he's responsible for his entire family tree. When you tie all of the families together, he then becomes responsible for all of the united families together as a family redeemer to clean up the um, rogue elements on the family tree. So you have to identify what was how the enemy was using us against us in order to break his method of dividing conquer. Once you understand the method clearly, you make contingencies to use the method to your advantage so that your enemy can't use it to conquer you. You can use it to come up on. And that's a great point right there. What are some action steps you think that we could do now? Uh, well, we passed all that. Now the elders hear that. They hear. They waiting on us to reach critical mass and understanding that when we come together as families and put our fucking foot down, there's no power in the universe that's not backing us up. But how do we come together? How do we come together like that? So right now we have what you call a battle cry. The battle cry is everybody look at this. This is how we're going to do it. And that's free Larry Hoover. Produce our king because the Galactic Council requested the king be presented of the sevenfold nation, GD nation. I wanted to go into that. Um, please, I want you to go a little bit deeper and explain it to the people how poor Larry Hoover really is, right? Because people just think that he's just some criminal gangster, right? And how important he is until until uh, the, the you know to our freedom. Period, right? Yeah. Right. So, like, please go into depth with Larry Hoover because this is important. Okay, so on our land, we form into our own tribes and we join into roles that's like us and we pick up what you call the flag. That means we tribed up with somebody. The leaders that a collection of tribes pick becomes classified as a chief or a king. Right. When he have all his, he had to have a certain amount of nations tied together in order to form a high chief seat or a king seat. There was three kings to the land, according to galactic agreement with Earth. The three kings that's walking, that's on this land right now, is Stan Tukey Williams, Larry Hoover and Chief Malik Angel Bay. Now, our enemies infiltrated our organizations and turned us against each other because that's what they do. But the leadership has always been fighting the same enemy together. But you can't fight every battle. That's called an empirical victory or a punic victory where you deplete your forces so much trying to fight every battle that when the real war is faced with, you don't have the resources to win. So the conservation of resources, the rules to the conjure war that we was fighting to get rid of them, right? And the method that they was using was cheating. They was violating the rules of the conjure war by killing those who have the opportunity to take the test to claim the king's seat. You have to have both the blood and the right. You get the right by the blessing of your family. First, you start with your nuclear family with each parent, then uncles and aunties, then cousins, and they all test you along certain lines to see if you honorable, noble character, high thinking, moral by nature and not by force. Because if you moral by force under certain conditions, you will not hold on to your morality. So it's conditional. Them ain't us. Mm -hmm. 
what we do is we make our own lane and we stand on what we believe on and like-minded people join us. Mm. So because I won the game and the chief of my clan is Larry Hoover, they asked me to produce the chief. So what I've been doing is master knocking in the public domain to tell the people that the Galactic Council wants to see the chief. They flipped me the signs and weathers, weather patterns and names of storms. Following the storm patterns, they talked to me because Garvey gave me the clue when he said, look for me in the whirlwind and I'm coming back with the millions of ancestors. That's the red dust cloud. The red dust cloud comes when Nibiru returns. The iron oxide makes the sky red, a crimson sky, a blood sky. Right, and that's the knock that uh, the last of the three chiefs uh, would be um, to be produced, which took place yesterday. So now that we made these people agree already to produce the three kings of the land, healthy, happy, and whole, in one piece to go meet the Galactic Council, now they agree now we got to wait until enough people from Earth agree to clean this shit up, to allow the mothership permission to breach the atmosphere. And this is to keep us from being paralyzed with fear. I don't mean to cut your wisdom. Um, uh, I, you know, I only stop to be a good host to try to get you to sir, touch on You good, you good. I, I never like to cut wisdom. I know some people might think like, damn, I was going in. Um, so, all right. So, as far as Larry Hoover go, right? Mm-hmm. And St you said Stanley Tookie Williams, but he's no longer. Mm -hmm. there, so. so you said that. That's, okay. So now this this is where the signs come in. They you can't kill the crooked man. The crooked man is the king of the Crips. All they have to do is start Crip walking, and they have to produce. It. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Do you, you mean on the soul level that they the no, 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 no. Just, just listen. I'm trying to give you the story. Arnold Schwarzenegger, by executive order of the governor of California, signed an agreement instead of killing Tukey to put him in cryostasis. This is why he played Mr. Freeze in Batman. The message came to me through what they call the Wind Talker channel. The Wind Talker channel flipped me the answer off Easy E, Ice Cube, Suge Knight, and um, Nipsey Hussle off of what they call a zigzag zig flip on a flea flicker. So they was trying to keep from getting killed while they tell the story of what the enemy was doing in real time they was being extracted using guerrilla tactics. Guerrilla tactics is just when they think you about to blow up and you about to be the man, we snatch you out the scene. So now they can't kill you. And extraction, it's military science. Mm. Mm. So they, so, so right now, all right, the question is what everybody's been wondering is what happens if they don't produce Larry Hoover. Cause I know they had a certain amount of time to do it and or, or Tookie or um you said Malik Bennett. No, they had a certain amount of, of time to give an answer. Give an answer, okay. So the government already agreed to produce these people. So what is would it be? It's gonna be in secret, obviously. What we wouldn't know. No, it's going it has to be in the public domain. Okay. That's good. Well, so we have to so what we have to do is exercise our policing powers of earth by getting together saying enough is enough and then we give the galactic council permission to allow the mother plane to breach the atmosphere galactic rules say they can't breach without a uh what they call a controlling majority uh, basically without our permission um right the consensus permission Right. Is there a certain number? Is is it like most of us? It's like well, 
the brother said he got a channel message on uh, his channel yesterday that it was 60 to 70 percent. So right now, I don't know what the percentage is. I'm just getting the message to the people so that they can take it up on themselves to see where they resonate with them. Yeah. If they understand clearly where we at in our age and our phases of evolution and at this closing of the age, what we are doing as a people. You know, we didn't watch all our leaders fall. Yes. Amagra Evans, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. We didn't watch the even pale skin leaders that was trying to do the right thing get murdered in public. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, John F. Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy. Yes. A lot you know? of people like Bill Cooper, people like Catherine Gibbons, you know, a lot, some that's not so prominent, but if you go do the research, it's like they was trying. You know what I mean? Yes. And they're no longer here. Just them getting ran off the side <clears throat> of the road is not a coincidence. But I want to ask you, recently there was an earthquake in Mexico. There was something going on in the skies from, you know, from some people they think, oh, it's just whatever. Some people don't know what's going on. But to some think that there's a galactic war going on up there. Is that true? Or is it something more to that? Is it a war? The, mo the mothership was just outside, of, on the other side of the cloud cover just above the canopy and it shot an energy weapon that caused that event. And that's why exactly 7.4 on the Richter scale, which is the numerical value of G and D. Mm. And at the same time this is taking place, Hurricane Larry is knocking at the East Gate. Hurricane Larry. Mm. Right? So this is telling me who they want to see. You think that was a that was just a warning? Um, no, it was a message. It wasn't even a warning. Message, okay, a message. It was telling me who they wanted to see, and telling me to give y'all the message. That's what made me get. I don't talk about aliens. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about anything that's not from this earth normally. Now I ain't got no choice because they here. Well, you know, on this on this platform, Rod, I want you to know, understand that this is we we you know this is the rabbit hole, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and and this is type of stuff that we talk about, we believe in, and we understand. I have a friend. I did a video with him. It's on my page. This is my my lifelong friend. You know, from kids. He long story short, he went into a coma because he um he, you know whatever his health condition was, he had to go into a coma, and he was in that coma for about. I want to say 60 to 90 days. I can't remember exactly when, but in those days he went, they took him from um, his body. He left his body. He went on the mothership, flew around a different um, universes, came back here and they told him, they showed him how the earth is going to be if he don't come back and help fix it. Right. And, and, and if anybody that want to, you know, go do further research it's on my page, just scroll down. I left it up. It's my bro took his name is brother Ola on Instagram. Long story short, these beings that he that he was in contact with was tall, really tall, black. I mean, black. He said black as you can get beings, melanated beings. It was, you know what I mean? And then you have the, if you go do your research, I forgot the guy's name. I posted it too. The white guy who, who he was talking, he's an old guy who was like in Area 51 and all that. And he was talking to a lady and, and then she asked him a question about, well, what did you see? He said, I seen I seen there was black people. He she was like, oh, so you see brown skin people? He said, no, black, right, really black. Like he stressed that to her. They wasn't brown. So just to let that. Yeah, so you know, that, like, that's yeah, that's yeah. absolutely correct. But you don't you got them your complexion too. Mm. That's on outside. We, yeah, we got yeah. we got some that literally is the exact same color as red gold. Wow. That's a little like a deeper red than than um, the sister here, mm. and it's a gold tint. They call it the golden ones for a reason. Mm. So the the this the tool of skin color was used as out of the caste system of India, and India's caste system was to assign families to certain levels that they couldn't get out of unless they branched out and became something other on their own. You're not supposed to leave your, your family's lot in the caste system. Well, they turned it into a skin-based caste system 
for money. Mm. Wow. You know, so they begin to pay people because their skin was less dark. And that's wow. what caused us to believe that the people with the lighter skin was actually doing the dirt because mm. they received something called the white privilege. Mm. That's the privilege that they was paying in the caste system to elevate the status when those people, some of them took that shit and ran with it. But a lot of us don't know is them KKK hoods. A lot of the reason they under them hoods is because they was darker than us. Wow. If you look back on some of the picture and some of the hands that's sticking from under them hoods, you are faint when you see how many of them is black ass niggas. Excuse the French. Hey, look, I could, I, you know, I can, I can believe and definitely agree with that because you know, mm -hmm. there's some of us like, you know, I watching the video earlier. You know, we talk about Nicki Minaj. I put out a video and she's talking about, you know, her, you know, like, you know, just be careful and do your own research before you get the jab. And then you got, I forgot the lady name, but she's on CNBC. She's a famous, prominent Harvard student, and she's like, Nikki, you're so dumb and stupid. Like, really calling her out her name. How can you tell people to do this? Like. She definitely was under that hood. It's like, or she would be under that hood. So I know that, you know, it ain't far fetched. <laughs> right. So them the same ones I told you look under my post and you'll see them being called agents for betraying the people. It's the same thing. They look like us, but yeah. they hurt. They like we are generous people. We want to see everybody succeed. They don't want to see nobody do more than them. Mm -hmm. If they think you're doing more than them, then they want to physically hurt you for it. Um, yeah. Yo, Rob, instead of doing instead of doing their own work. You know what's so crazy? I have um I you know I went on a little rant the other day. I went live, balance to tell you. And I have prominent people. I have like I have famous family, I have famous friends, and you know, and I have just family, period, and friends that just and they, and, and like people will talk behind my back and say, Oh, he's talking about aliens and he's on. And I'm like, yo, like, why do you think they don't, they don't get it? Why? Like, I don't get, like, is it not meant for everybody? Is it some of no. us, called, you know, some of us? Look, look, we, we can be using the exact same words. They frequency is different. They don't, they, it's like, you, it's, you sound like one of the adults from Charlie Brown. <laughs> they hear you talking, <laughs> but none of the words is compute. It don't resonate, that's true. Yeah, yes, they on a, they on a different frequency. Is it because yeah. programmed? Because we we all melanated, we should that frequency should tap in at some point, right? Or is it because the program? Every, look, listen, listen, listen. Every brother ain't a brother because it's color. That's what I say. Yes. And, and you you and you specified that earlier when I asked you the question of do the reptilians come back as us? And you and you you don't know what you did for me when you specified that because I felt mm -hmm. like that too. You know what I mean? And that that just shed a lot. Yeah, they come back in all skin colors. The human family is the Earth family. Yes. And when you kill a reptilian on Earth, they come back looking human. Do they come but back? They, do they come back under knowing who they are, like uh, unbeknownst, like unlike us, like when we, you know, do they come? They back? have more. They have more memory right. than I, we do. That's what I'm asking. Right. This is what. That's how they stayed ahead of us. <laughs> They stayed ahead of us because they they figured out that if they made us look for validation from the external world, we couldn't find the God within. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's go there. Let's go down that route. That's, that's where we need oh, to go. I, sure. that's, a big, <laughs> that's a big argument on my platform. That's everything. Right? Every day, right? Right, Balance? Big, right. big argument on my platform that we are gods. I tell people, man, we connect mm -hmm. with the source, the God, whatever you want to call it. But we are reflection of that. We are that experiencing itself. Here and now, do you agree with that, or you know, want to give your input on that? So the guy within is what you call your higher self. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Your higher self in your ego self has a mediator that they call the id. Mm. Right. And the id's job is to balance the higher self with the lower self. It's supposed to correct the base energies of the ego to refine the personality so that it can facilitate the God form in 3D reality. But as long as you allow your validation to come from the external world, 
before using yourself as the first frame of reference, then the external world draws your God energy and uses it against you. Yes. They're stealing your energy. They're seeping your own energy yes. from you, but you're allowing it to. You're uh, open. You're, you're open to it. That's so true. Right. Mm. Yes, I most definitely agree with that. Um, so like you're looking, you're looking for so, like the people who you know whatever you want to believe, you can believe it out there. But the people who look looking out there for something to come help them and yeah, and looking within, it's like that's just that's just like waiting on something to happen that's not going to happen. I mean, um, never going to happen. That's exactly why they want us to feel our inner vibration of the self on this message of Free Larry Hoover, so that we take in control of our destiny ourselves. When we call them in here, we we not calling them in from a place of fear. We call them in from a place of power and control. Yeah. This my shit. They don't belong here. Come get these motherfuckers before we fuck them up. Yes. yes. Well, let me ask right. you. Um, you earlier you was talking about um Larry Hoover when he was saying, you know, you know we need brain bangers, right? You know, bangers. Mm -hmm. you know, um. When you was when you was studying and learning all this from Larry, was you was you in the prison system with him, or is it like this information coming to you while you outside? I want to know your personal relationship with Larry. That's what I want to know, so the people will know. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna tell you this is amazing. I don't have a personal relationship with Larry. I never met the man a day in my life. Hmm. But he talked to me on the Wind Talker channel. I've been reading the Wind Talker channel since I can remember. And um, this is how I've been given prophecy and future predictions that came true that's recorded in my family's oral history. And I was able to do it through being able to read the Wind Talker channel at an early age. But I was able to read the Wind Talker channel because I'm not just a, a love child, I was conjured up. So, my birth was based on a system of African conjure called voodoo. The system is to call the lower to come resolve the matters on earth. If it get out of control, they go all the way up to Obatala, the great father, right? But before they get to him, they have to get to the Ogun, the warrior, the enforcer, the political um, genius, you know, them all is the under the authority of Ogun. But Ogun can't come unless the Orisha as a collective call him. One of them can't call him by themselves on their own because he's a problem. They can't make him do nothing. And so when they decide to call the Ogun, then they start sending off what you call in um, our tribal language, Gorilla Knocks for the Congo key. The Congo key is a Congo basin in every land on the planet, including Australia. The Congo key is the key to all of the lands, and it's the primate key, which is known as the gorilla key, the master key. Well, only the one with the gorilla grip strong enough to hold it can turn it. Right? So these are um, like brain. Um, triggers that you unlock in, in real time in life by going through certain refinement processes of development, like a rites of passage program. The closer you get to the top, the more mental the task becomes until you dealing with the primary mental reality and it makes your physical suffer in the dark night of the soul. Mm. And while you're going through the physical suffering, you have to both meditate, think, and find the God within in order to come back out the other side, what they call with a new day after the dark night of the soul. So when you're going through the dark night of the soul, you actually fighting a war internally against the ego self. The reason you fighting that war is because you want your God form to take charge of your physical form and exercise God-like intellect to solve the problems that's causing my to be off balance. Mm. 
-hmm. When mind is off balance, everything stops until it is. And it's always um, rebalanced at the close of the age. And at the close of the age, all of the open conjures have to be closed so that the new generation can start without the negative energy created from the prior generation. And so a lot of high conjure went on in defending our people from the ones that came. And the last one that's still open right now is the Haitian black pig ceremony um, where they cook the pig with the sweet meat, um, making it sweet by saturating it with pineapples and honey and stuff like that. But when they opened the ritual, the priestess sacrificed herself because self-sacrifice is the highest form of sacrifice. And when you do it for your people, your people are supposed to, uh, when you come back, show you reverence. And that's how you close the ceremony by having a festival in honor of the priestess that performed, that gave her life for the liberation of her people. And until they do that, she suffer in being here in this life. And they hold all of the people suffer because she suffered, because they haven't properly honored her yet. So you're saying that's is that why we're we're suffering right now? Nope, we're suffering right now from lack of unity. Yes, that's ex the, the exact thing that they use to bust us up because they good at sowing seeds of dissension. Mm -hmm. It's the girl that walk with you, sister, be like, "Ooh, look at that bitch shoes." Mm -hmm. Yeah, she get get rid of her. I don't have any of them around. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the one that be like, ooh, I ain't never seen no shoes like that. That's unique. I wonder how she made them. Exactly. I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. I know I got a lot of questions, Balance. I'm probably, if you, if you got questions. <laughs> no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go All ahead. right. Um, if you got questions too, just chime in. Don't, you know. I, I, I got you. <laughs> I'm around crazy. So I, really more so, more, more, not really a question. Just I want you to actually like, you know, because, all right, I grew up, you um, know, in the Bronx, Castle Hill Projects. Um. In my projects, in my section of the Bronx, there was a gang formulated known as Sex Money Murder, which became a notorious set of the Bloods, as far as New York City. And um, Pistol Pete, which is which is, which is the uh, um, the originator of Sex Money Murders, in there with Larry, who in Colorado, right? Yeah. Um, he on the list. Hey, you know what I mean? Pistol is a list. Right. Right. So everything that they use to oppress us, even the people that like. The that's that's the ones that was putting fifties on people play uh, buck fifties across people's face, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm, I'm, them, that was that click, right? Well, so, no, 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 not sex money murder was not from buck fifties, but it was actually, you know, it's a name speaks for itself. But um, you know, I I, I did want to I did want to just just to um you know let me get to the point where I was gonna say is, I think that my personal opinion is that you know. I, I, me personally, you know, I went to trial in 2008 to 2012 for conspiracy being involved in that gang, sex, money, murder. I won. I came out, you know what I mean? I was acquitted on all charges where I could have been doing life in prison. So I'm here doing this work now, right? And I right. really believe in my heart that our gangs, us, people like us, people like Larry Hoover, this will make me even want to talk to you even more. People like Pistol Pete, they are definitely, you're right. They are our leaders. They you know, they let them go tomorrow. This gang culture that's killing each other, it'll stop tomorrow. And I think Instant. people know that instantly. So I just wanted you to talk to the talk to the youngest right now, talk to even people my age. You were elder to me. Yo, what like all y'all kids that's out there right now and this gang coach killing each other. I say it all the time, but yo, y'all, y'all are our soldiers, y'all are our people. Like, I just want you to talk to them real quick, man. Let them know who they are okay. and you know what? That right now, I, I'm not. I don't have no words for him. I don't want to turn him down. I want to turn him up, but I want to focus that energy on Free Larry Hoover. Yeah. Right. Because the leaders that they look up to and got the respect for is back in Larry Hoover. Talk so if all of their leaders that they respect and the homeboys in their hood that they look up to is back in the Larry Hoover play, 
they should get behind that that same play because then they can get to see something that we never thought we'd be able to see a blade knack unity in the face of the enemy that he can do nothing about but sit there and squirm in his panties because he's a cross dresser. Mm. Mm. That's right. And I, I I definitely don't want to turn them down either. My whole thing is to turn the guns away. Okay. From people. Those ain't those ain't your ops. If you are going to turn it somewhere, you know, turn it towards your ops, but it ain't even a gun. It's the energy. Like you said, focus the energy mm -hmm. somewhere else. You know what I mean? That I definitely mm -hmm. don't 100% agree with you with that. And I'm all for the free Larry Hoover campaign. And, and, and well, one another thing I wanted to ask, um, I seen Ice, Isis is a good friend of mine. I know she interviewed you also. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, heard, I listened to the whole thing. Um, Isis was talking about Larry Hoover being a descendant of King David and when she put the pictures next to each other, I was like, what the? I was like, oh, shit, he looked just like me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, those characters, those biblical characters is actually chieftains of the land that they uh, distorted the story and told you that it was from another part of the world altogether. This yeah. Egypt. Right yeah. now, you're seeing what they call the great exodus, all these people's running and they don't know where they're going. That's why I say that uh, many shall run two and four back and forth and knowledge shall be increased. Well, what the fuck is they running two and four? They starting to see. But the problem is, is the blind leading the blind and they can only end up in one place and that's a ditch. So the man in the land of the blind, the one died man, the one with his third eye open becomes king. Mm -hmm. You know, so what we do as a family unit we look at the situation in front of us, what we've been through as a collective people, what we face with if we don't come together versus what we face with if we stand firm together on one single topic. That's called consolidation of power. It's the military strategy for the people to take their destiny into their own hands. The leaders that we picked in our community is the ones that they classified as villains and publicly humiliated them so that we can call them criminal. But none of the people of the land never knew that we ain't in the United States if we ain't in DC. DC is the whole of the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The rest of everything outside of DC is tribal land. Mm. They deceived us into believing by treaty that it was no longer tribal land. This was a country called the United States. But they deceived us using the postal service because everywhere they set up a post office, they had what they call protectorate right of a certain radius around the post office. So they used the postal authority, which was supposed to activate what we call tribal police forcing, which is the Muftis of Angel Bay, he is the enforcer of the laws of the land. And that's why they called him a terrorist and locked him up because he was trying to get the imposters off the land. They don't belong here and they are ruining our children and our children's lives. So when he went to make the move to get them off the land, then he, was, he wasn't even the one actually making the move. But anyway, the move being made to get the apostles off the land, they sacked what we call the El Rookins, right? And the rooks on the chessboard is the piece that's the tower. Yes. So he was the rook on, the, on this end, the law of the land, and he sent a bishop to California to govern the land named T. Rogers. Mm. T. T. Rogers is the one who organized the Bloods once they were formed. Gotcha. Right? Because they didn't have a leader. Rest in peace. You'll see him soon. Okay. Don't believe everything you read. Okay. All right. All right. You know, I, you're right. I'm going to. He did everything righteous by the rules of war. Mm. Everything was righteous by the rules of war. War has rules. It's the same now when we're dealing with the Galactic Council and Earth. There's rules. 
People want them to just bust in here like they homeboy from the fifth floor. <laughs> and just start walking around, busting people upside the head. It don't work like that. Well, well, can, ain't can, nobody going to save us but us. Thank you, man. That, yo, I mean, that's the message. And, and, that, and that's definitely should always be the message because if we keep looking for, like you said, external sources, whether I, I, I say the same thing you just said all the time. It, the aliens, I think, talk about is not coming. We got to yeah. do it. We are, we here. What are we, what are we waiting for anyway? Like, yeah. we here. Like, why would we sit back and wait? Like, you know, my, oh, my we had to be born my first. My great, great, great grandmother was waiting for Jesus to come back. They all thought they was coming back in their time. It was that bad. Every single era is that bad, right? It's the revelation. Mm -hmm. Every single era, okay. right? <laughs> right, so the fair kind explained it like this. He said, God, punishment is a long and drawn out process of punishment and relief. Punishment and relief. It, the process is called life resistance training. While they was training soldiers in the army, we was training soldiers by the laws of nature in the street. Because our enemies had well-trained armies all over the world, if you look, you will find that nature formed gangs all over the world. Mm. Because the enemy assumed the position of authority, but we held the position of righteousness, which was the defenders of the planet which gave us what we call the position of right in the galactic um, chess game. The position of right is always the highest position in the galactic chess game. So no matter what look like, they, they telling us shit right that ain't right. They convincing us and luring us in the behavior that ain't right, but that ain't where our hearts is at. They keep got us in a psychological trauma state post-traumatic slave disorder that prevents yeah. us from turning within, seeing the inner light and let that motherfucker shine in the world. You know, and they use it through the blood rights and the sex rights. Mm. When you say the sex rights, what do you mean? You mean through the um, trafficking? The sex rights is all forms of deviant sexual behavior mm. that's based on pain, and punishment and suffering. Mm. The energy side effect of that produces a certain atmosphere on the planet that make the women behave in a rogue fashion. Mm -hmm. They don't like it that because they can know babies are being damaged. So they begin to act out against the men. So it creates what you call gender warfare as a side effect. Because mm. the women... Yeah. The women's shaking the men, wake up, motherfucker, we, we in danger. The baby's being hurt. And the men talking about, huh? Mm -hmm. What? What? I'm glad I go to work. Mm -hmm. Fuck a job. Ooh. Fuck a job. Mm -hmm. Ain't no job more important than my child. X. That's okay. So fuck a job. Now what? I quit. I don't need to work here. Take this job and serve it. Johnny Paycheck. Oh. Because you're not going to keep, if you ask me from how I feel about it, when I was a little boy, my mama said, oh, never let nobody take nothing from your brothers and your sisters. I took that shit to heart because it felt right. That shit felt so right that I've been doing that my whole life. Mm -hmm. But they don't never call me until they get to 10. So I'm coming in on 11 because they exhausted one through 10 already. That's a fact. You know? Go so me, that's why they don't want to call me. Don't call that motherfucker because you already know how he is. You can turn him on, but he ain't going to turn off till he get ready. He's going to make sure the whole threat is neutralized first. This is a different kind of fighting for me. You know, I like the guns and the gun smoke. I like the fist fights and turn my spit red while I push your snot box back. You know, I'm into that. I want the smoke. 
But now they telling me that I have to fight in a whole manner that's foreign to my physiology with the brain. When you said they telling you that's that's the Galactic Federation. You you no, they, no, no. The Galactic Federation is who I had to learn how to contact by learning a language that I didn't even know existed. I do. The only way you can learn the language is you have to master a certain amount of subjects. You master a subject by collecting a certain amount of keys on each subject. The keys are points of understanding that allow you to understand the subject matter from the same position as somebody who went through their schooling system without the influence of the underlying doctrine of servitude that is attached to it. So you, self education then becomes more important than rote education through university. Well, can I ask you a question? Because um, you said that's the only way, but uh, tomorrow- No, that's the only way. I, 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 I was gonna say tomorrow I have another guest who, who who's a channeler, who channels the Galactic Federation. Um, you know, so, right. yeah, she, that, so what, what the Earth families is the ones who conjured me to do the work. Mm -hmm. they, they the ones who sent the knocks to me, right? <clears throat> because I'm a mama's boy, I understood how to read women by being up under my mama all the time as her right hand man. That gave me an added advantage when I got over to the um, going through my father lines rites of passage under the Blue Lodge. So when I went through that stage, I came out the other side and they was like, holy shit. So when I got to a certain level in the streets, before I end up coming to the joint, I had earned a certain level of respect from the elders above me because they was all testing me in certain areas. And I was passing every test, you know? So Larry wanted to know if I could get the money up from nothing, can I get it from the dirt? So I hustled and got it from the dirt and turned two $10 rocks into a quarter, a quarter key a week, you know, just in, in nine months, you know? so different things that they did using the oppressors oppressive tools as the training method to overcome the oppression wow. everything they threw at me i turned it around and used it to my advantage instead of allowed it to become detrimental to my survival so when i got sentenced to prison my immediate course of action was okay what well, how can i use this dead time Mm. How, how can I how use time it? was it that you did if you don't mind me asking I did uh 16 years and son 16 years and during that 16 years I like you know what did you do because I, I, I like I told you I was on right because I faced I faced life in prison but I did four years fighting that case and I felt like I turned those four years to like a universe like I I learned a lot I found myself you know what I'm saying right so in those 16 years like you know that's what I did. I turned it into a university, a monastery, uh, a law school, um, study of arts and entertainment, theatrics. I studied everything. I didn't. I, I was going to use that time and I was going to learn and get whatever I could get out their ass. Because you're not going to just have me sitting here and I don't gain something from it. Yes. So when I got out, I even used my jobs um, time to even get me further education by getting the exact position I needed to have the time to study at the same time I work. Because wow. <laughs> wow. I was no way I'm going to work for these peanuts and mm -hmm. not find a way to get something out this shit. I even learned their system so well I can use it and apply it in everything that I'm doing is understanding process which keeps me from bugging out doing this work because I should have been had a nervous breakdown if I was normal. I ain't normal. Well, you know, yes. I, I, I say the same thing. I don't think I'm normal either. I don't think balance is normal either. She's That's like, a good thing. balance, a good thing. you're a gift. You're, you're just like a, you're just like a whole package gift balance. Like you don't even know. Yeah, she glow over there. Yeah, right. I'm, 
take you pick it. you pick the good one that'll be your compliment on the show. Yo, I, you know what? I keep it valid. I hey, look, pick her. the universe picked her. Like she just look, landed here. Like she, she keeping it balanced. You got a hard face. She got a soft one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't smile much, and she smile like the sun. So Yo, hey. I know her fucking teeth are perfect. So white and shit. She don't do nothing to them. Like they just white. Like what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Thank y'all. <laughs> well, you know yeah, that's that's, a, that's her inner glow that makes all that. Like it, it really you don't is. have to do do extra stuff. She likes, you know. Really I see is. it. I see what's going on. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. But yo, bro, Poetic we got, we got never one in fifteen minutes coming up. Um, I want to, <laughs> I want to definitely. Um, any question? Last question, balance. Do you have for the bro, bro Hayes? It was a lot of information here. It was. It's so good. It's so much. But tell us what we can do. Us like like minded people to unify and to get this going. Okay, so now the biggest thing we need to do is put pressure on them people we've been buying their records, watching their movies. If you want to be on this land and you want to keep your wealth, you're going to support the people. We either going to come together or you motherfuckers ain't going to have nothing when it's over. Because if you don't support us now, we ain't going to support you when we come, when our soldiers come in and take all your shit. So this where we at with that part, get the word to the community is either unify or die. That's where we at. Unify. We either come together. I like yeah. that. It's because that's that true. That needs a slogan, unify yeah. or die. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. But we had to come from the true place. The true place is going to tell us if we right or if we wrong. Mm -hmm. When you come from the true place, you got, you're going to feel it. You're going to be like, this feel right. Do what yes. feel right and fuck the rest of it and fuck anybody's opinion. Yes. Because that's like a stinky butthole. Everybody got one and they all stink. <laughs> and I appreciate I appreciate both of you brothers for always speaking your truth in spite of what everybody else says. You know what I mean? You're, you're being real with you. So I appreciate both of you guys. I can't be real with you if I ain't real with me. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's why I be teaching like when people ask me like what's the best thing to teach the boys? The best thing to teach them is ain't, ain't no sense of you trying to get no respect in the world if you don't got no respect for yourself. For yourself. Absolutely. The, stuff, the, the fact that you got self-respect gonna make other people automatically give you respect. Facts. Absolutely. So when Absolutely. you carry yourself that commands respect, you never find yourself having to demand respect. That's a shout out to Jay Prince. <laughs> Yo, that's that's that, you know it's so crazy. That's my big bro right there, man. I'm I, if you don't know, I'm the one. I don't know if you heard about his um his artist chain getting snatched in the Bronx. Um, two, yeah, two, I remember. I'm Somebody the one got I, I, remember. I was the one on TMZ with him. It's me that you're talking to. And look how it comes back full circle, like full circle, <laughs> right? Like you know what I mean? That's yeah. my big bro. In in the in the language you just told me, we was closing the loops. Yes. Right. So what that means for us is that we closing in on all our enemies on all front. We closing the loops. Gorilla's mm -hmm. been knocking, got the whole nation rocking and the, and the matriarchs are swaying, got the ground starting to say it's time to bring these people to their feet. Yeah. You know, so it's, a, it's the whole nation on the rise. It's just that are we going to find it in ourselves and in our heart to stand up to say enough is enough. Yeah. You're not going to keep taking our leaders. You're not going to keep raping our babies and eating them and using them for sex toys. You're yes. not going to keep raping our women, using them for punching bags. Because the domestic violence is not a love situation. It's mm -hmm. a hostage situation disguised mm -hmm. as a love relationship. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. We don't believe in domestic violence where we come from. If you need to beat her into submission, you ain't ready for a woman. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yo, that's and that's problem. coming straight from a gorilla pimp. <laughs> <laughs> that's a so we about to we about to close out, Rod Hayes. I appreciate you, big bro. Yes, sir. OG Elder, thank you for coming up. You know, what I mean, this is going to get views. This is going to get a lot of views. I know it is because this is knowledge, and, and you can't stop knowledge from spreading. Thank you, bro. Yes, appreciate sir. you. Yo, I want one, one last, last thing before we go. Okay, I was, <laughs> I want to tell you one last thing. Then you can say one last thing. I just want to tell you, 
just keep going live, keep speaking on your platform. People are paying attention to you right now. And I just wanted to keep going. I need the world to hear your voice. That's all I wanted to tell you. Yes. Yes, sir. And, and if you uh, get to hear from Jay Prince, say so I said respect begets respect. And it is returned in the kind. Most definitely. Love I got you. Love that. All right. <laughs> That was dope. So that was <laughs> dope. That was a great combo, man. Yo, look, he got he dropped a lot of knowledge. Um, how you feel? Good. I mean, I was just soaking it in. I didn't I didn't even have anything to add because all of it is just, you know, gaining that knowledge and listening and taking it in. You gotta absorb it. You know what I mean? Certain times you don't have to say anything. You just yes. you know, let that absorb and then it'll manifest later into what it's supposed to. Yes. You know? Definitely, mm -hmm. man. Shout out to Rod Hayes. Appreciate you for coming up. Um, yeah, man, this is another, you know, episode down the rabbit hole with 4 5th. I'm your host, Hogan 4 5th, and my co host, Ballast of Cold. And, you know, thank y'all for tuning in. We out. Peace. Peace.